Hi, I'm Sterling Perrin with Heavy Reading, and I'm talking today with Moran Roth from Juniper, and we are discussing the future of coherent pluggable optics, which is, um, just thinking about it, uh, recently, coherent optics has been, had about a 14-year run, 13, 14 years commercially, but as you think about the advancements that are going on now, it, it's, it's not slowing down, it it's actually it seems to be accelerating, which is really quite amazing for a technology that's been around so long. There's hardware, there's software. Uh, want to, uh, Moran, want to talk about all the aspects, but what maybe start on the software uh, components first. Um, one of the big things we're, we're hearing and, and seeing, and I'm sure you are too, multi-layer and multi-vendor control and management uh, in these architectures with coherent pluggables. One of the questions that I get a lot is, is the management of those pluggables. Who's, who is, managing that that pluggable optic uh in the router is it is it the optics and the optic optical team is it the router and, and the ip team um how does juniper see that playing out first uh, thank you sterling for having me um when uh, we talk about uh, management of the transceiver we need to um, distinguish between configuration and uh, monitoring the configuration is really simple. Uh, in most use cases, the pluggable will come out in the host in the default mode uh, with a default default uh, transmit power. And really the only uh, parameter that is need to be configured is the wavelength uh, in a DWDM uh, configuration. And this is really simple to do uh, through the host, through the router, uh, CLI, or the controller, the IP controller. Um, when we talk about monitoring, the key here is supporting open uh, APIs, because we realize that every customer, every carrier or network operator will have a different scheme of managing this um, in, uh, integration of IP and optical. And having open APIs will allow every operator to use their own tools in order to manage that uh, integration. So the open APIs, yeah, Juniper is a, a router vendor. Uh, so you sell on, on the systems level, the, the pluggables are in there. The open APIs, the responsibility for those is is Juniper. That's something that Juniper has to build into its systems. Is that how it works? Exactly. So the transceiver is integrated into the host. The host can be a router or a switch. And the host software is the one that uh, expose all the optical parameters to uh, through open config and net config um, models to a higher layer uh, for, for management, for monitoring of the coherent transceiver. So one of the other areas of, of interop, um, and it, it also gets into this, you know, this kind of merging of the optics and, and the IP layer, the, the routing, um, it really came to the, the top of, of the list in our surveys of the past, I don't know, maybe 18 months, and it's been consistently up there. This issue of plug-to-host interoperability, again, I'm sure, an area that, that you're very familiar with in your own discussions. Um, what do you see in, in this plug-to-host interoperability, the, the router being the host in that case, um, what do you see as the gaps when we look at 400, uh, 400 ZR+, plus, which is what we see as the, the optic that is you know, primary of primary interest in, in telecom um, as opposed to the ZR. Looking at 400 ZR plus, um, are there gaps in, in plug to host interop? And if so, what, what do you see as the main ones? So the OIF um, standardized a management or host to transceiver interface that is called CIMIS or Common Management Interface Specification. And uh, the goal of that specification is a plug and play operation. Uh, it's a lofty goal that unfortunately today we are still not there. We, 
integrated and we are working on integration of multiple types of these coherent transceivers in our routers and switches. And we see differentiation in the implementation of that interface between different uh, transceiver vendors and between DSP vendors uh, in the market. So until we really achieve that plug and play goal, uh, we believe that the right uh, approach is to integrate the transceiver and the host uh, from the same supplier. And so Juniper, Juniper does that currently. You, you're not a components vendor, but but you have an optic that you've co-developed or, or I'm not even sure if that's the right term for it, but you have an optic that works with the Juniper routers today, correct? Exactly. So we, our strategy is, uh, as you mentioned, it's the co-development of optics. We are not vertically integrated uh, and developing all the components by ourselves. We are partnering with the building block suppliers, DSP, COSA, ITLA, the different optical sub-assemblies. And uh, we have a partner that is building this module with us. And it, at the same time, we also work with third-party uh, partners uh, to integrate their, their transceivers into the Juniper ecosystem. So again, we are trying to foster an open ecosystem here. But we believe that the, there is still um, need in the rigorous testing of these transceiver in the host. Again, until the promise of the CMIS interface plug and play is realized. Right, right. Makes sense. So it's kind of a you're open, you will support third party optics, but in terms of where just where the market and industry is today, you're going to kind of take a steps al along that. Uh, let me switch gears. Um, you know, it's interesting, 400 ZR, we always, historically, you talk about the, the rates going up and up when, whenever you get to a data rate. Uh, in this case, it is going up, it's 800 ZR. But the other really interesting trend we've seen over the past year is, is, is a, a downstream, I guess, um, iteration, 100G uh, coherent pluggable optics, 100G or 100 ZR, but I don't know that there's really a standardized term. Um, is Juniper interested in, in the 100, 100 ZR market? Um, kind of in, in quotes, and if so, what, what do you see as the main drivers for that? Um, yes, definitely. This is a very interesting development. Uh, there are different approaches to 100 gig ZR in the market. Um, we see companies just take the 400 gig ZR plus uh, and fix it on the 100 gig mode and, uh, and then use it in that use case. Uh, we believe that the right approach, and this is the approach we are working with partner partners, is to develop a dedicated DSP really uh, for that use case in order to lower the power consumption. Uh, and then by lowering the power consumption, uh, this transceiver can fit into a QSFP28 form factor and not QSFPDD. This really enables it uh, to save power and get significantly higher density in access and metro networks. For, for Juniper, will those pluggables, uh, and I, I agree that the, um, the, the QSFP28 does seem to be where the market is, is going. It, it never works to kind of retrofit a higher end thing and just say it's a, it's a, it's a lower end. Do you see the 100 ZR, the 100 gig ZRs going primarily into routers, or do you see lots of other hosts out there for this type of pluggable? And will Juniper do things other than, you know, kind of straight router implementations for, at 100 gig? So we need to look at the use cases for that uh, technology. And the, the main use cases that we see are uh, two types. One is in mobile backhaul. Uh, where you need to uh, aggregate a lot of uh, cell site uh, gateways into uh, the data center. Uh, and then you need the, the high gig ZR capacity and reach. 
Uh, and the other one is in metro aggregation, where today uh, a lot of carriers are using 10 gig DWDM. The next step from moving is from 10 gig DWDM aggregation is naturally to 100 gig. And here, ZR provide the right solution. So multiple markets, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, last area, let me um, kind of look out into the future um, a bit. We've talked a, a bit about, well, we've talked about the 100 ZR trend, um, but for 400 gig ZR plus, um, today, you know, the, the, the modules that are on the market today, current iteration, do you think the performance, uh, the, the specs of today's modules meet the requirements for operators, um, or do you see other um, capabilities, whatever, you know, advancements in the performance needed to, to really hit mass market with, at 400 ZR plus? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, with this uh, advancement of uh, coherent technology, uh, starting with 400 gig ZR, ZR plus, uh, we talked about the 100 gig ZR, and now we are talking about even higher performance, 800 gig uh, mm. ZR capability to take 400 gig even longer reaches. You can say that uh, coherent optics is taking over the world. Um, but example of that uh, new application is the... Um, OpenZR Plus Forum just released their 3.0 um, specification that include a new 400 gig ZR mode that you can call 400 gig ZR Plus mm Plus -hmm. uh, and enable uh, operation. If today open uh, 400 gig ZR Plus enable uh, a few hundred kilometers reach, maybe five, six hundred kilometers. This new mode will enable uh, more than thousand kilometers uh, of uh, operation. So significant, significantly uh, improving the performance, and we believe that this uh, advancement will enable new use cases and new capabilities for operators to use these transceivers uh, across a broader set of applications. Do you think is is it going to be eight hundred ZR plus, but but the operators are running it at a, at a four hundred gig rate? Is that what's going to happen, or or is it actually going to be still just four hundred gig uh, ZR plus plus optic? So the key here is the uh, power consumption. In my view, uh -huh. uh, we need to see where the power consumption for the different modes is uh, going to be. The big promise is to enable this 400 gig ZR++ to be integrated into existing 400 gig ports. Ah, uh, right. Right, and then you can use it in existing platforms, deployed in the core. Um, if the power consumption end up to be uh, being too high, then it will lend itself really to use in a more, um, uh, higher power 800 gig platforms. Right, right, makes sense. Great, so yeah, we, we've, uh, I think we have a, a new a new term uh, from, from this discussion. We always hear software is eating the world, but um, maybe it's coherent optics that's gonna eat the world. So there's a lot happening. Uh, really appreciate uh, catching up with you, Moran. Hope to see you in person in the not too distant future. Uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Sterling. Sure, thanks for the update.